Hey folks, it's Brian the Cobbler back with another video. Now, apparently I am supposed to say, please like and subscribe to my channel. So won't you please do that? And maybe there's a link, I don't know. Maybe there's one here, a here, there, there. I don't know, but if you'll do that, that would be very helpful. So apparently you people are very bored. You're so bored that you're spending time watching videos of people fixing shoes. I don't get it. I really don't get it, you know? Can't you find something better to do? No? Okay. Then I'm gonna make a shoe repair video. We got a nice pair of men's Johnston & Murphy dress shoes, which we're gonna do a heel repair on. They're a little worn out, a little faded. We'll take care of that at the end with some polish and conditioners. Okay, so first of all, we'll talk terminology. So a lot of people think that this is the heel, and you're partly correct. This lower layer here, this heel cap, is what we call the heel. Now below that is the base. Now in a really well-made pair of boots or shoes, that base is typically gonna be uh, stacked leather, or in this case, it's fiber. A fiber base is basically, think about particle board. So we're gonna just remove the heel cap for replacement. So we'll throw it up on the last. Grab our handy pliers, and sometimes these come off easily, and sometimes they don't. And this would be the they don't one. There it goes. That's going to break on me. Oh, yeah. So there you go. Sometimes it's a little easier than that, but that is the heel that we're going to replace. That goes in the trash. Do that for the other one. Okay, kids, so once you've got that heel cap off, your heels will look about like this. You can see there's a little left behind there, but that's okay because next we're going to sand and resurface the heel and get it ready for gluing. Uh, but first, let's pick a heel. A uh, dress shoe like this will typically get what's known as a 12 iron. Uh, that's pretty appropriate for most dress shoes. You can go a little thicker. Um, 12 iron is a, a, another terminology used in shoe repair. It is the equivalent of, I believe, one quarter inch and about 6.4 millimeters. For those of you who are taking notes. And yes, there will be a test. Here's a brand I use. These are a GTO and that is a rubber heel cap in 12 iron. That's about what it looks like. And we're gonna also resurface this to prep it for gluing. And first what I like to do is I like to get a head start. If you look at the breast of the heel, I said breast, it's got a little curvature to it. So I like to kind of pre-cut that to kind of get me started. And we're gonna do that on the five in one machine, which I'll make plenty of jokes about later. All right, folks, we are here at the five and one machine. We're, we're hanging out at the five and one. Um, I still don't know why they call it a five and one. I've asked every cobbler I know what five things it does, and to the best of our knowledge, we can only come up with four. Uh, primarily, what you're gonna use it for is skiving leather, and we're gonna talk about that later when we do a buildup on a heel and cutting leather and rubber. So I'm gonna give a little pre-cut to this heel to, again, try and match the, the shape of the front of the heel or the breast of the heel, and then I'll sand out the rest. And then we'll go to the finisher. Okay, so we are at the finisher with our various sanding wheels. We're gonna resurface these heels and the 
heel caps as well. And then we're gonna glue them up. Here we go, let's make some noise. have our heels we have our newly sanded heels or bases that are ready uh, to take glue um, and first we're gonna rough these up with a scratching pad are you guys still watching this are you kidding me you're still watching a shoe repair video You guys are pathetic. Okay, so we have our scratching pad. Don't recommend it for scratching your back. So I always like to kind of rough these up. It helps uh, accept the bond of the glue a little better. Get it nice and rough. Now, for purposes of gluing, we use all-purpose glue. Um, I use probably the most common brand, which is Barge. Now, you can get contact cement at your local hardware store. The big difference is it will not have toluene in it. Um, that's only available for retailers such as me. Um, and toluene definitely makes this stuff work. And uh, it also gets you pretty high. I mean, we're basically, as cobblers, just huffing glue all day. So, you know, the next time you wonder, what's wrong with my cobbler? He just seems really off. That's it right there, baby. That's it. Okay. I do keep my glue in a little glue jar. A little brush here. Looks like we need to add a little more, but that's all right. Get some on there. Nice even coats. Make sure you get those edges. One good coat can do it. You can use two, but I don't find it to be necessary. Set that aside. Set that aside. Get those heels, the good coat. Set that aside. Now the deal with contact cement, and this is very important, is that it needs to have some open time. Um, which means basically once you've glued both surfaces, you've got to let them sit open. I recommend a minimum of 15 minutes. You can wait even an hour. Uh, if I were to glue this on right now, it would be minimally effective. Um, so we're going to just wait about 20 minutes on this, and then I'm going to come back and we'll uh, slap these babies on. But it has been about 20 minutes, trust me. And our glue on our heel and base, our setup. Um, I like to heat these up in my uh, Easy Bake oven, uh, make some pliable 
um, makes them stick a little better. You don't have to heat both surfaces, but definitely do one. I do the heel. So I'm gonna go do that real quick and come back and we'll slap these on. So line up the front of the breast of the heel. Match that shape nice and neat. Press it down and hammer it in place. I always like to take these edges and kind of roll them so you make sure you seal that outside edge really well. And there we go. Next, we'll go back to the five and one cutter and we're gonna trim out all this excess. Okie folks, so now we've got our heels sanded nice and smooth. They are ready to be inked. And your standard ink is Feebeans Burnishing Wax Ink. Um, obviously it gives it color. The other nice thing it does is it has wax in it. So it gives it a waterproof finish. Now that is a temporary waterproofing but it helps to seal and protect the leather or fiber base. Now I just did a heel on this, but for a nice neat finish, you can do the edge of the sole as well. You don't need to get it on the rubber. It will not adhere just get it all along the edges. As such. Okay, so we're gonna let those dry and we're gonna come back and burnish those a little bit on the welt brush, give them some polish and a conditioner, and then we are done. I'm gonna add a little Yankee wax here to the welt brush and I use good old fashioned Lincoln's wax um, for polishing and I'll be adding some of that to this brush here. Here we go. I like to start out with a little welt brush, try to get that wax embedded a little deeper. Then we'll go to the polishing. see the difference from how we started this program. 